and welcome back to No Capes, the show where we talk about creator-owned comics with creator-owned comics. Today we have an extra special surprise season finale for the show with the incredible, unimitable, not as furry as you'd think, comic book yeti Matt Leggetti. Hello, hello everybody. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for having me, Sean. Thank you for coming on the show. This has been something I've been itching to do for a while, so I'm really glad that I was able to squeeze you into this season and we can do this little extra episode here. Um, yeah. It's, it's been really great getting to know you on, on the Twitter sphere over the last year, a few months. It's, time has no meaning anymore. What is time? Yeah. Yeah, time is a circle. <laughs> time is a flat circle, that's right. Yeah. I know. But, Ever since March 2020, I, I'm just like, no, it's still March 2020. Time just stopped, right? right? That's that's how this works. Right? Yeah. It's wild. Like, that's when I started this thing. Oh, man. It's crazy to think about. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 mean, left, I left my hospitality job because it was risky, too risky. Yeah. And then shortly after that, No Capes was born. Nice. And here we are, three seasons in. That's amazing. So cool. Yeah, it's, you know, having that extra time to to really put your all into something is, ah, it's the best. It is. It's, it's really one day I can... Oh, go ahead. No, no, you. Oh, I was just going to say, hopefully one day I can do the same for Comic Book Yeti. It's, uh, I always think about the Welcome to Night Vale guys, where it's like, uh, one of them got laid off uh, from his job, I think. Yeah, uh, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Um, and he just was like, "Well, I have all this time. I don't know what to do, and I'm just going to start a a podcast." And now, look at Welcome to Night Vale. Like, what a decade later or more, and it's this enormous thing that they have have built. Like, it's so great to see that. Yeah, it is. It's 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 a really incredible thing that they've put up together. And I mean, like, yeah, you look at um, Adventure Zone and Mabim Bam. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't seem like anything you would expect to just blow up the way that they did. But they're yeah. so good. They're so fun. And they did. They just resonated with people in, in just that, that right way and really blew up. And good for them. Yeah, seriously. Just catch that lightning in a bottle. And, and, and yeah, that's it. There's like... Just not just any combination of family and you know random guys talking at a microphone is going to work out that way, but right, it did, and good, yeah, good for them, yeah, and good for us because I wouldn't be here without the support of everybody in the in community and people like you and and my partner Robin and I love doing this thing and getting to talk to everyone and getting to know everyone in the community. Which, as an Australian, I wouldn't be able to do otherwise. It's true. Yeah, this this community is the best. I, um, I'm usually a little bit fearful of communities, because I'm like, oh, I don't know if I want to commit, because if they want me to be a part of them, then that's questionable. But uh, I, I just... Comics was amazing, like, especially indie comics. It, I feel like there's no better community. I'm just like, Hey, I want to talk about comics, and then all these people are like, "Hey, let's be best friends." Like, yeah, it was incredible showing up at Thought Bubble and just having like the Irish comics crew being like, "Hey, meet us at the bar like down the street," and you know, buying me beer. And I'm like, it feels really nice to go overseas and feel like you have friends. Right, exactly. Like, I if I ever get the chance to make it to one of these USA cons, I'm not. I know that I'm not going to feel lost and alone because there are people yeah. there who know me already. And I will feel like I can go up and go, hey, hi, I'm here. Right. Uh, can I someone show me around? <laughs> right. <laughs> I, um, like, Declan Shelby has been a follower of ours since, you know, we have we had only been around for a few months. And when I showed up at Thought Bubble, he's sitting at the table and I'm like, <laughs> like, I'm wearing my comic book Yeti shirt, like, and then I'm like, I should probably say words now, because he doesn't have any idea who I am. <laughs> uh, but as soon as I said comic book Yeti, he's like, Matt, 
awesome. Uh, yeah, like Thought Bubble was great just because at that time I was reading almost everything that people sent me. Yeah. And so I'm just like, I, I felt it felt like the best fever dream because I was able to just talk to everyone about their comics and it god there is just no better feeling than that right i would love to go to thought bubble some of my favorite people in comics do thought bubble every year and i would love to be able to get over there like i'd love to be able to go over and sit down and have coffee with ted and Roe. yes yeah uh hung out with ted and Roe just briefly um they're wonderful people um oh god what was her name the um the manager for the white noise guys was there um and so she and ted Rowe and i were just hanging out for a minute then talked to Hass, who you just had on the the show and uh yeah it i mean it's just great i was like this guy came up to talk to me while i was talking to hassan and uh it turned out to be oh god x-men writer uh I'm just drawing a blank because it's been the longest week ever. But yeah, it's cool. It's like you just think that that's a person who's here for the show, and it turns out that they're this big name creator, and you've right? never seen them before. Yeah. And it, yeah, it's the best. That's it. That's why I'm working on getting the Vault crew to have a booth at our Australian shows sometime. Because yes, the sh- our shows could only bring so many people over it every year because yeah. But yeah, if we could actually have a Vault presence on the show floor, oh. That'd be- incredible that would be uh, just delightful yeah and speaking of vault today we are talking about another vault book from their nightfall imprint which has well let me see here two names that are very very familiar to the show of jason wordy and jim campbell letters and um I think, I could be wrong because I've got the old ADHD memory, I think this is the first time we've talked about a Chris Sheehan book, and this is the first Daniel Krauss book we've covered on the show, but it is one that I've been itching to cover for a long time. So we're talking about The Autumnal, which is a really cool, spooky story. Did you tell us a little bit about it as well, Yeti? Because, like... Yeah, I've got a lot to say I, about it, but I know that you have a, are excited to talk about this one. I always have a lot to say. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I was like, well, you know, it's late August, and that's basically Halloween. So Yeah, it's like we, the, the uh, season started to turn. The spice is flowing. The spice must flow, and it is flowing, and it is time to read some spookies. And I've been wanting to read the autumnal since it came out. Uh, I was have been following Christian ever since uh, Deadbeat came out with Jed McPherson, which is fantastic. It's free. Go look it up. Um, highly recommend it. And I was just like, God, this this guy can... There are comics that are black and white that look like they were made for color, and then there are comics that are black and white that look phenomenal as black and white. Mm-hmm. And that mm-hmm. was Deadbeat. And just his his textures, his style, I was like, oh, this guy's going to blow up. Um, and so seeing him, his name, uh, I looked for his pronouns on his uh, Twitter bio and I didn't see him. So, Chris, I'm sorry if you're uh, if you prefer they them. Um, I apologize. But um, yeah, I when I saw the his name on the autumnal, I was like, yes, absolutely. I have to check that out. And then Daniel Krause going, you know, from, from books to comics and making that leap. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's really enticing too. Yeah. And, and yeah, if there's something that Dan knows well, it is this spooky shit. And I really like Dan's work <laughs> in this area. Yes. I, I, and so, enjoyed the hell out of this book and there's so many good things to be said about it and mm-hmm. i'm looking forward to showing everyone some of these pages as we go through well vault knows that what makes a good horror story is taking something is innocuous the right word just mundane something normal yeah and make it terrifying right and so now you know 
if I see autumn leaves, I'm like, yeah, we'll, we'll get to spoilers later. But uh, yeah, it's it, they did did a great job setting this up, um, the whole team. And, you know, it, it's hard to, t- to say, oh, is this the creative team? Is this Adrian editing? And like, how did they how did they get here? Who put how much spice in? But yeah, just just all around phenomenal work. It, it is. It's and like Chris's covers for every single cover oh. that Chris did for this book is just next level. Yeah, I mean, you he really put his foot down with the one with the um, branches or whatever going. That's into, what uh, is the... on my screen right now. Um, oh. I'm looking at the the vault listing for the autumnal, and that's the cover that they've chosen. It's like, this is what we're about. This is what you're in for. Right? Yeah. And, what was it? Yeah, eight issues. It was only eight issues, but it did not feel like that was, like, you know, only is subjective. Yeah. But right. it could have been much longer, and I would have been happy with that. But the issues yeah. were so dense with story Yeah. that I didn't even realize that it was that short. Oh, I know. I blazed through it in a couple hours. Uh, I was like, go to sleep, children. Daddy's reading. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> no, I got the kids down. And then uh, I, I just was like, I I, I, I don't even want to say powered through because it wasn't difficult. I just started reading and then I was like, oh, God, it's over. What happened? Where did the time go? Right? Yeah. And the Without fail, the books that consistently do that for me are vault titles yes there's only been there's... one other like long run series that i've done that with and that was actually the one that ted and roe introduced me to uh which hat atelier oh i don't generally yes. read a lot of manga because well one it's a little harder to get not in australia generally just like my city doesn't have that many comic book shops left anymore yeah. and they if they get manga they tend to just get what's based off the pop what the popular anime at the time are based off oh sure yeah so i don't get to see a lot of like interesting stuff like that unless people tell me what it is and i can then go and order it so i yeah. picked it up on comicsology and before you knew it i'd read seven volumes <laughs> because oh, i man. just got hooked it was it's such a beautiful book like, the art is incredible and the some of the things they do with their art and their panel borders and and layout is so yeah. clever. I I need to check it out. Al's been um our our contributor and manga and webtoon editor. Al um wrote a review of that, and I I mean everything that she covers sounds incredible, and I'm like, well, add that to the list. Yeah, it is, it is it is incredible. It's one of the only books that has made me laugh out loud because of how clever the design was. Wow, of like the panel art. Man, I ah, uh, you're selling me on this. Yeah, I I was sitting in bed with uh reading it. Robin was doing something else, and I just turned a page and just started cracking up because there was one panel that was just so impressive. Huh. It was very simple, but it was so impressive. God, that's the best though. And I I love when it's like it's so simple. You're like, why didn't I think of that? Exactly. But it's also and and look, so some of the stuff that Chris does in this book is is just like that for me. Like, I'm oh, flipping God. the pages, and I'm just like. That's such a cool way to, like, it's so mundane, but that is so terrifying in this context. Yes. And we'll, we'll show people some of that as we go through, but... Um, but, like, uh, Jason Wordy's colors add oh. so much, and they do so much, where it's... the He'll alternate between warm and cools, which is something that I've always loved um, in film, and then when I so- see that represented in comics i'm like oh well done and so you know you could very easily have every panel in some of these pages with i didn't see a lot of uh nine panel grids but i want to say like six panel pages and it's like warm cool warm cool warm cool and had they not done that or had Jason not done that and just kept it flat the whole way through, it wouldn't have the same impact. But it highlights the certain emotions and it's like 
I mean, it's it's in the first chapter, I, or the first issue, I want to say. <clears throat> no spoilers, but it goes with the the main character's mood, and it's mm. like okay, warm for feeling stronger cool for this kind of more vulnerable this um yeah ah oh, so well done it is it really is and the, what i really love uh about the book overall as well is how the, the the panel borders aren't borders yeah like they just did just gutters with no hard borders and i love yeah. that it fits the tone of this story and the sort of organic gritty horror yeah so well and they've done the textures that they've used in both the like the inking and the coloring mm -hmm. is just so rich and really lends to this earthy natural like this is a force of nature that's gonna destroy everything sort of yeah. horror well and that the texture thing is is what did it for me because yeah like you said it's in the inks but it's also in the colors and yeah. so you have this entire creative team is bringing so much to the table and it doesn't feel like an assembly line. It feels like they have worked together and are letting everyone just, you don't bring on Jason Morty or Jim Campbell and tell them to just do the bare minimum. Right. Like they, yeah, they like, are really, yeah. Oh. Jim's letters in this book, again, like Jim always does a fantastic job. I think yes. I cannot, remember how many G books with jim campbell's work on them i've talked about on this show oh my god yeah it's like four letterers that i can guarantee dominate the no capes lineup so far is jim hassan yes um crank oh crank is great yeah yep and hang on aditya Bla well Ad aditya comes in I think equal with Blambot. So far. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think Blambot. I think Nate and Aditya have about the same amount of books in <laughs> that we've talked about so far. Yep. But the, yeah, those oh. are like the top 5 names that keep showing up. And World Design yeah. shows up a lot as well. Oh yeah. Well, especially if you're going to cover vaults, I feel like Jim Campbell and And World and World are the the top 2 that are working on most of those books. Yeah. Yeah, and, and they all do such incredible work. Oh my god, yeah. Well, it's like, I feel like in the autumnal, you don't see a ton of sound effects, but the ones that are there, there's a scene with the, the bus mm. uh, in this first issue, and it says, Grum! And it's diagonal, and it just gives so much depth to that panel, and I'm like, God, I love it. Right? And and so to give everyone a little bit of of backstory for this, the book itself, um, the book is set in Comfort Notch, New Hampshire. Uh, it's a little little town, you know, out in the boonies sort of thing. Um, and Cat Somerville is our main character, and her mother has just died that she hasn't seen for God knows how long. Um. And she has to come back to deal with that. She can barely remember the town at all. And she's brought her daughter along. And it's just the two of them for reasons. And they're trying to settle in to something a bit more normal and a bit more stable than what they've had before. And quickly start to find out that that's not something you can really do in Comfort Notch. Yeah, and... There's some hints at some drama but in tension between her and her dead mother, and you can feel this generational trauma mm -hmm. in, but with Kat and with Sybil, and I feel like that's an ongoing theme, this generational trauma uh, in the book, and it's explored in really cool ways, as cool as generational trauma can be. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, generational trauma sucks. Exploring generational right. trauma can be done in really cool ways. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, But yeah, the panel border thing was great just because they, they have so many effects with the leaves and um, 
they'll come out between the the panels or explode out of them in ways that are just so visually stimulating but also isn't just uh, a flourish isn't just for show it it makes that theme uh of the leaves that we'll discuss later all the stronger exactly and like the first page really sets sets us up for the tone of at least cat's story you know like she's walking into the school here and immediately there's blood on the concrete and she just starts swearing <laughs> it's like okay this is the kind of book that you have to get ready for it's like you know you you open you crack this open at the comic book store to check out the the interior art and it's like okay this is either for you or it's not for you based on this first page but to me it immediately grabbed me and i was like all right blood and cursing got it right i i love it and like i i can relate to that energy you know like that that casual swearing energy feels it right. feels very at home for me as an australian <laughs> right um and yeah like we we soon find out that yep the her daughter has been in trouble for fighting again mm -hmm. and yeah it's we've seen this scene in film and other places of like the kids in trouble the mom shows up the principal's tired and just wants everything to be okay and the mom is being supportive and just trying her best. And, like, you really get that sense of, like, it's just these two. And the mom's trying her best. The kid is is trying her best and probably, like, older than her actual age. And that sucks. But being raised uh, the way that she was likely will contribute to that and so you know it teases out these little reveals of their past in this first issue um through the dialogue there's not a ton of uh of captions at all in this book or no. you know just dropping exposition for you no exactly we're all it's it, it's all revealed very organically through watching the experiences of these characters and i love that i love the way that's done like you know exposition caption boxes stuff like that is all fine it has its place but i really like um the way that this story just unfolds as the characters experience stuff yeah and yeah, I, I love how um, Kat just doesn't really take it take it from the principal as well. Yeah, it's you kind of expect her to roll over based on you know seeing this scene in the past, and instead they just leave town. <laughs> yeah, right. And yeah, like right at the end there, she pulls down her glasses and she's got that black eye. So it's just like, yeah, you're you you're not winning this one, teacher principal. Like, yeah, there is a situation here. You don't know what's going on. Yeah. You are not in control here. And yeah, then Kat's just... Off we go. Right. Oh, it's it's kind of, you know, heartbreaking because it almost feels like it's these two against the world. Yeah. And as a reader, you want them to find a place to put their roots down. Uh, yeah. We'll and, talk about that in a minute. <laughs> yeah, I, I love the, this next scene as well, where Kat's, you know, obviously drinking a bit more than she probably should and is struggling with the, the realities of the situation. And it's all in this, like, cold but bright, stark blue tone. Yes. There's, like, really, yeah. it feels like isolation. Yeah. I mean, so much of this beginning comic I'm just re-looking at it on my tablet, but it is, it's blues and cool tones, and that contrasts hard with this uh, town of uh, Comfort Notch and all of the autumn leaves that you're about to see. Exactly. And so now is 
when uh, we we will say like you know take off and read this comic if you haven't read it already because it's going to be really really hard with how excited we are about this book to not talk spoilers so mm-hmm. if you haven't read it bugger off read the book come back watch this episode and then tell us what you think about the book in the comments below because we really want to talk about it some more but um yeah spoilers abound cover your ears come back later yeah that um uh, pause go ahead and pause and read the book i'm gonna give you a second okay welcome back i hope you liked that book uh so what i said put roots down it was a pun and we'll get to why later but i feel like i would be amiss if i did not include a pun in anything that i am a part of remiss not a mess again Mm. long sorry folks All right, so where are we in the book? Um, we right, are there. currently sitting. I'm yeah. sitting on the page where uh, she's on the phone in the lounge room, surrounded by bottles. Okay, so she is not in a good place, and you know she's wanting to escape clearly uh, through drinking. One of my favorite uh, escape techniques uh and, but then she gets a phone call and it's like hey here's some bad news you have to be responsible and you know soap her up real fast uh and it's like hey you're what, can, can we just say what happens are, are we good yeah we're good we're good all right and it's like basically your mom is dead uh she left you a house. You have to go back to this childhood home that you haven't been to in decades and, um, you know, fig- figure out what you want to do with this house and come to the funeral. And that's pretty much the, uh, the impetus, the catalyst to pick up and leave. Ex- yeah, exactly. And you can, you can see like, not even reading it you know you can see the conflict and the tension and the the rough history that there is just looking at this three panel page where Mm -hmm. cat has shattered the mirror yeah and it's just staring at her own black eye and thinking about the past yeah no one shatters a mirror because they're having a good time I mean, that's seven years of bad luck that they have to deal with now. Yeah. But... <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, it's... It, it's just really cinematic, uh, this layout. And it's like these bigger panels are just taking a little... Imagine it on the screen. It's this, like, slower yeah. thought moment. Ugh. Right, yeah, I can I can kind of see it as, you know, like, starts from behind and comes slowly around to the right and then cuts up to the face sort of thing. Exactly. Not like comics have to be, you know... No, 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 but if you, like, like you, you can you can see feel it that eye. visual in your mind because of how they've drawn, like... Yes. Not even thinking about it as a cinematic adaptation, but you can just feel... I can feel that yeah. looking at the art. Although so I'm not going to lie, a mm-hmm. cinematic adaptation of the autumnal would be terrifying. Oh my god, yes. Well, and it's funny, like, what I love about the autumnal is it takes a lot of things that we have seen before. You know, it's it's a horror movie format that has parts that we've seen before, but that is part of the horror mm. genre. Exactly. And that's what Vault Falls best is, you know, like in Queen of Bad Dreams, you still had that moment where the detective has to give up her badge. Like it is, they take these things that are part of the genre and then they they build around it in beautiful ways. And that's exactly what the autumnal does. Yeah, exactly. That's it. It, it takes all of those building blocks that exist and then presents them in in interesting ways and does new things 
to push this story out. Yeah. Cause, and that's the thing. Like, it's almost impossible to do any very specific genre without using some of those building blocks. But the things that I see consistently coming out of Vault is their writers and artists and creators using those building blocks and stacking them up in ways I've never seen before. Yes, exactly. That's a really good way of putting it. And yeah, like it, pretty much immediately after that, we see them pack up into the, the taxi and then next thing you know, they're on a, a bus to fucking the middle of nowhere. Yep. It's away. Yeah. Yeah, and they're talking about trauma and, you know, leaving town and where are we going to go? What are we going <laughs> to do? And then it's like, hey, kid, look on the bright side. And, you know, this mm -hmm. touching moment between mother and daughter. And, ah, right. oh, gosh, what that transition from those cool colors to the, to... the warmth in that last panel. I tell you what, though, uh, that, that second last panel there. Yep. That is chilling it looks yep. like that bus is full of dead people yes what great foreshadowing you know mm. and if you've ever been on a bus like that in the middle of the night it's kind of creepy or a train or anything like that yeah. like it's just all the lights are off the people aren't moving yeah that's kind of the feeling that you get yep yep and you know what the last time i was on in a situation like that, I was probably pretty close to that kid's age. Man, yeah. yeah. That I imagine being what seven years old, like that would probably be pretty creepy. Yeah, yeah, yep. And and then yeah, we get the. Uh, let me just switch to our double page spread here. Oh, that detail. Oh. Yeah, yeah. We get this this gorgeous gorgeous double page spread of comfort notch it looks yeah. delightful it, it looks absolutely delightful it's it's all oranges and reds and greens it looks clean there's people going about their lives yeah like the only thing on the ground are leaves you know and uh it's this first extremely warm bright panel uh that we've seen several pages in 15 pages in apparently according to my tablet <laughs> uh but yeah it's and and so you're like okay well maybe this is the new beginning that they needed granted it's probably not because i've seen the cover of the comic but maybe <laughs> I wanna believe. right yeah i want to believe that they're getting a chance at something nice but and i love i love this little thing with the um the leaf in the bottom right panel and the, oh, the dashed it's line. Fun. It's so brilliant because it's just like you can't miss it. And I love challenging comic book formalism mm. with the the dashed line. And it's, you know, you read the panels in order and then you start back over again and watch this leaf that you imagine would be going in front of them. Yeah. And it smacks down with again a sound effect that we don't see a lot of in this book exactly and so and you imagine the scene hitting so hard mm -hmm. it's a little leaf but it hits like a hammer right and and honestly that's a creepy looking sound effect yeah for an innocent you know? little leaf that's a very sinister looking sound effect right it's that texture on the the letters and the you know Again, you have this very organic. It's that is not a font that has been, you know, mm. picked off of uh, defont.com. Like that is that is that looks like a hand drawn sound effect. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, and like the, the sharpness of it and everything, it looks it it doesn't match what feels like a very normal, innocent autumn leaf landing on the ground. Yes. You know, just a little impending doom in the autumn. It's fine. Yeah, just a little. And then, you know, uh, Sybil reacts to it and picks it up. And you're like, no, what are you doing? That looks dangerous. Like, yeah, I, I feel like that's a dangerous leaf somehow. Yeah, I feel like that's a bad idea. And then, yeah, we get the uh, the groundskeeper snatches it from her. And is yeah. like, don't do that. 
Well, and like the right before the groundskeeper, she's holding it in front of her face like her mom's bruise. And it's mm. almost like the this kid doing something playful uh out of something that is hurtful and awful. And you know, you see this this pain in Kat's face of like, God, I don't even want you to play like that or think about that. I don't want you to end up like me or I don't want you looking like me, I think she says. And then we have the same chlorophyll, which was really adorable. Yeah. Yeah, the the don't do that and the the creepy groundskeeper. Yeah, like he, him then like trying to pretend like nothing's actually wrong. Yeah. I love how it's from her point of view. Yeah. Uh, look at him to make him look even scarier. Right? Like yeah, this this team was the perfect combination for this story. Oh they, they executed it so well. And like th this looks like a bright sunny happy scene but there's just such unsettling vibes especially in that forced smile from the groundskeeper mm -hmm. after he just panicked <sighs> yeah and then that next page where you get kind of those edges mm. coming in a little bit and then the leaves falling down with their own dashed lines you're like oh it's not just that one leaf something's up with all of the leaves right yeah, there's just something about nature in this place. Yeah. Don't know what it is, but it's freaking out the groundskeeper. And then we get more leaves coming in. I love the leaves between panels. Yeah, uh, I was about to say, that that's, that's such a cool touch. I love the way that they've done that. And the, the, the leaves are something ever-present. Something is yes. connected to this. Oh, God. There's a scene toward the end of the book where you just see this little leaf hanging out in the background in multiple panels on the page. Mm. And it's just this, like, constant reminder of this uh, malignant presence. Yeah, right? Yeah, and I guess it doesn't uh, Kat say, like, she, like, she feels like the, the leaves are, are watching her. I think so, something like that. Um, and it's she's also like, why is everyone looking at us? Or Sybil is saying that. But it's like, Kat kind of brushes it off. Like, well, you know, we're two new people in a small town and I've got a black eye. Like, what do you think? Yeah. Why, why do you think they're looking at us? But it has that traditional horror movie small town thing of like, oh, the great we are good. the... Yeah, the greater good. Hot fuzz. I love it. So, you know, it's it's planting those seeds. Yeah. Yeah, it really is that uh that fresh victims vibe. Yeah. It really ah, oh, so good. And then we get more leaves. She approaches the funeral home. Yeah. And then the the kids singing that oh. creepy little song. Yeah. You know, like kids do. There's, there's something uh, when kids sing in a creepy sort of way. It's just ugh. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then again, we get this double page spread of like at first glance, it's like oh, cool, cute, some colorful chalk drawings, and then it's like uh, murder and witches and yeah, baby sacrifices and you know, like kids do. It's all about uh, all about that as they're singing. All oh god, it's. Something is definitely wrong in this town, is what we're seeing. Yeah, exactly. Like, it really it immediately drives home that something really sinister is happening here. Oh, and the there she grows as it lights upon the casket. Oh, right. nice foreshadowing there. Yeah, and it's it's just such a cool juxtaposition between yeah this this fairly innocent looking artwork at first yep and children playing and singing in the park but the the content is genuinely disturbing yeah you get that um 
cognitive dissonance of like okay you you have kids playing you have fun little chalk art and the the words are terrifying and so it it grates on you a little bit mm-hmm. uh, to jostle you into being like yeah this you pay attention to this yeah and then yeah we get a scene in the church yep the empty funeral home yeah uh foreshadowing the the grandma um and we come back to these colors that we started with these cool colors and there's you know that hint of warmth there right outside but Mm -hmm. but it looks really sinister now yeah like that this lady comes from the back room and there's the the warm yellows on her from the light but this time it feels really uh sickly and and sinister and then you have sybil citing her name with a little smiley face and it's just like She's not picking up on any of the the sinister things. She's just like, all right, I'm up for a new life. Let's go. Yep. Yep. And then suddenly, yeah, they're they're just left alone. Yeah. And yeah, we get this thing where the the casket is closed mm-hmm. despite what uh they've asked for. Yep. Oh, and here is where I was talking about the alternating cool and warm yeah. tones. Ah, oh, yeah. So then you have this very paced out scene next of these six panels. And she's just speaking her mind, what she remembers of this relationship and kind of how she's traumatized by it and again you see the the warmth draining out of here and then going to cool but here it's all about like she's hot under the collar kind of yeah. like she, she's yeah, it's passionate like it's, yeah it's not a peaceful warmth it's like yeah the fire of anger and resentment and yes and then she cools down toward the end but i just love how every panel is paced the same it's uh yeah sorry the the pacing is great on this it is it really is um and and i love how we're given you know like this this moment where she opens the casket and the funeral uh director just comes out and slams it closed yes well it's like um with these emotions and you know we find out later like she's forgotten parts of her childhood and when that starts to jog up memories you see this um the the white like color holds i want to say mm. coming in from sides where it it feels like static where it's like uh i can't remember like it, at first i thought it was emotion it felt very much like um wordy's work in resonant Mm, Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you know you don't realize what it's really about until much later yeah exactly and then she opens that lady slams it yeah we get that final page where it cracks back open a little bit after they've left and there's just (laughs) branches and twigs and leaves and like stuff sticking out of the body and but they're actually sprouting as well yeah, it's like you, there's that you have one green leaf yeah there's that one green leaf so like the that her mom might be dead but something isn't something yeah. isn't and then that there she grows yeah following that like yeah. it's perfectly paced with the diagonal like if you look at the flow of this mm. you know you turn the page you can't help but look at the face and then you're like well i should look at the the caption here biddle biddle going back to the children's the super creepy children's song there she grows and it's like oh god hell of a first issue yeah i loved it i couldn't i couldn't wait for the next issue i was so excited and frustrated because i finished it so quickly and then i had to wait a whole month for the next one yeah for sure because i like as soon as i saw this one announced um I, i picked this one up 
And the second I got here, I just like, okay, let's, we're going to subscribe to that and, right. and just get the downloads automatically every time one comes out. Yeah, seriously. And like when Comixology was still good, I didn't do that with many series. There was only, I think, five series I ever subscribed to. And yeah. this was one of them. I I mean, it's so good in the way that each issue ends on these cliffhangers. You're like, well, I need to know what happens next. I have to. Yeah, I, exactly. I So often with a vault book, I'll finish it, finish the issue and get really angry. <laughs> because... Right? Because so I true. want to know what happens next, but now I have to wait. <laughs> right. Because they'll they'll end on a stinger like this, where it's just like, that was so good. Yeah. No. Just I no. Know. And my problem is, is I have the memory of a goldfish, so by the time the next issue comes out, I'm like, wait, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> yep. I know. <laughs> So hard i'm just like oh god just give me the trade like yep. if it's gonna be an ongoing yeah i can get reading you know monthly especially if they you know have a little thing in there like previously on blah 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 right like i, but, I can't help reading monthly because my little adhd brain is just like i want it now but then yes i always try to get the trade and reread it if i get the chance so that i can read it yeah. all at once yeah it's uh and I mean, I like, uh, if if Santa is out there and listening, you know, if a, <laughs> if a, little, if a little box of, of trades, you know, happened to arrive right. on my doorstep one day, I wouldn't be upset. Yes. Yeah, I, uh, reading through these Savage Shores, um, like, I followed the basic story, but when I read reread through it in the trade, I was like, oh, God there is all this stuff that I didn't even notice and it is just masterfully done. Mm, right? Like, yeah, every time I've gone back and reread a book before a show, there have been so many little things that I didn't notice before. Um, and especially, like, for me, it's the lettering so often. Yes. Um, I, I notice little things about the lettering that I didn't really notice previously. Like, yeah. I love um, how uh, Jim's done the upside-down notes for some of the songs yeah so it's like uh oh that's cool i didn't even notice that before yeah i was just just, yeah. just staring at it just now cool. i was like oh yeah and it makes it feel discordant yeah you definitely like hear it in a minor key or imagine it in that yeah but you, you uh, for me it feels like like a sudden switch yeah between major and minor yeah it does for sure Yeah, and I love the, the blood red leaves and everything, and the next starting the next issue, like it, they're ever present. Like we were saying, it's yeah, it's uh, you know, at first when you see that double page spread, it's like, oh, this is beautiful. Look at the the autumn majesty in front of us, and then it's kind of like too much of a good thing, and you're like, oh god, you're everywhere. Like I I can't get away from you, right? And I love, like, the, the I'm not sure, I can't remember if it was the official cover here, but, like, the art that they've used to promote the next issue, where mm -hmm. there's, like, sitting in the back of the car, but the leaves are just on the window with the handprints over them. Yes. But there's no oh. one there. So creepy. Yeah, I, I love that. And it's, like, 3 a.m. Yeah. Oh. There's just, there's so many just uncomfortable and unsettling things in this book yeah they build up that that discomfort so well and kind of tease out these little things where you can kind of laugh it off at how hostile or threatening they are yeah and then it's just more and more and more and more right and and i love the way that they really use the format of comics for this story because <coughs> yeah. like you said there's like there's a lot of you know like not everything has to be an adaptation and while this would make a really good horror film i feel like it works best as this comic because it takes feels like it takes advantage of the page turn yes 
it does that very well and it also um like a couple of pages into the second issue you see this um sybil like splashes into the water and mm. you, know, you get this panel explosion with all this texture and everything and it's right. like this is not a comic that is just made to pitch a movie no this is it a is comic a comic made comic. for the love of comics and this story was chosen to be told yes using this medium and that's it there are certain things that you you could do that same scene in a movie and it might be you know fairly gripping but it wouldn't yeah. have the same impact as that artwork does Absolutely. the way that it's presented and i really love the way they play with the format of comics for mm -hmm. this with their you know the the missing panel borders and the way that things creep in like you said like the the color being sort of scratched out at the edges yeah. and stuff uh. like, like something is clawing at the edges of memory and i love the <clears> use <throat> of negative space um not only in the gutters and those things coming in but during the scene with the rain and the rain's coming down and instead of drawing like all this line art it's just these white streaks coming down mm. instead mm -hmm. and it works so well with the texture of the line art that i'm i'm just blown away i love it yeah exactly but yeah. i just i just love the way that they they do that and like just just tell this story but is what i mean by yeah. that like the way they they tell this incredibly unsettling and creepy story but also highly emotional and heartwarming and touching like her relationship with her daughter right and, and, and then she like, meets this see yeah. in she, oh go ahead yeah she oh, sorry she she meets like a potential new love interest yeah and like their their story is really sweet and touching too yeah it's you know you don't you don't get that in a lot of horror movies. Like you're starting to with this horror film revival mm. um, that we're having, but for the most part, it, it it's kind of like base value with yeah. the horror genre. Yeah, I and, I love a horror it. genre that touch it, that actually pulls at your heartstrings at the same time. Yes, that's when it's the most effective. That's when you actually care about the people and you yeah. don't want them. Dying. Exactly, like you might get given one character that is you you grow to like and you care about them not dying but you don't necessarily see character growth and healing right. and like new beginnings and things like that happening at the same time yes and it's it's really cool the way they they play with all of that in the story too mm -hmm. and um it's just such an incredible book like I don't want to go into too much detail about the rest of it to avoid those spoilers, but you know, it is, it is a really, really incredible book. It's not a very long run. It doesn't need to be, but so if, you know, if you're yeah. looking for something new and fun to read, but you don't feel like you can commit to a long ongoing series, like this is a perfect little horror book to, to do that with. Um, highly recommend yeah. picking up the trade and just reading it all in one sitting and then rereading it another two or three times absolutely there are things um that i noticed like just looking at issue two which you know we won't go into uh but the there's a character who comes up and it's like his hair is exactly the color of the autumn leaves and yeah. it's like god i didn't even notice that the first time and as i'm looking at it right now i'm like oh, yep that's yeah, right? I, I highly recommend this. Read yeah, and it's, through it's, it's very affordable, thing. actually, too. I'm I'm looking at it on the Vault website right now. It's uh, eighteen dollars for the trade. Oh my gosh! And it's that so worth comes it. with an ebook as well of it. Yeah, it's um, <clears throat> like it. It's sad, but it's true. You don't see a lot of new series getting eight issues. Like, yeah, so many of them are just like you get three to five to make a trade and you're lucky if you get that. Yeah. But to to see this team put out a full story and it doesn't feel like there's any filler. It doesn't feel like it's ending before it's time. It feels like it's just perfect. Yeah, it feels like it's told the way they wanted to tell it. Yeah, it's a complete story. It doesn't feel like there's things missing. I mean, I want more. Because this world was just really cool. Yeah. 
but I don't feel like it's missing anything. Yeah, I agree. It's I, I feel like that about pretty much all of the vault books. Like I want more from that world because the world is so rich and interesting and I just want to experience more of it, but I never feel like they've left important things out. Like there have been a couple uh what was the one with the kids with the magic powers on an island? I feel like that just got um Oh, that's a good ended question. Before its time. Um and then there is the mall that uh, Michael Morisi, um comic. And I was like, no, I need this to finish. I want to know what happens. I, that's exactly how I felt about Outer Darkness. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, John Lehman told us after we did the episode that it had been like fully canceled and we were both just like, no. God. <laughs> it's such how? a good book. It's that's such a good awesome. book. Yeah man yeah it's it's a bummer like there are so many books like that where it's people just fall off like every issue has diminishing returns and it's it's sad <clears throat> um but people just like new stuff and the publishers don't have enough time or money to uh market everything yeah. new stuff is and ongoing every issue every trade it's just this is indie comics there's not enough money or time to go around yeah exactly i mean publishers hey if you want to send me a book <laughs> i will <laughs> right. i will read it and rant about it i will i i love talking about indie books i just can't afford to buy them all i mostly buy digitally because you know like i said like books are expensive in australia a, a floppy can cost anywhere between five to ten bucks man and then Unbelievable. you know yeah. buying from oh. the publishers directly you got to add probably half again the, the cost price because of the exchange rate and then shipping is wild oh yeah so if you want a physical copy of a book it's something that is going to be really special exactly and that's why like you look on this shelf behind me it's not very full yeah like it's got it's got some good books on it some of them are up here but it's not very full because yeah books are really expensive in australia um so i i get i'll get a comic maybe once a year physical one when i go to conventions yep and because conventions have been cancelled for like two years yeah i haven't gone to many and usually i'll just buy a couple of floppies or a trade directly from a creator that's got their their stall there rather than going mm -hmm. to the big comic shops and buying trades because if i'm going to buy something i want to buy more directly from the creator if i can and that's usually what i can afford as well is a floppy or a real thin trade right no i was so mad at thought bubble i, I kept on looking for alex becknottle um so that i could buy friendo off of him mm. and he was never at the table and i was like all right, man, I, I'm just going to have to go get it from Martin Simmons. And then he, he's like, I finally saw Alex, and he's like, where'd you get that? And I was like, from Martin. He's like, why didn't you buy it from me? I was like, I couldn't find you. I'm sorry. I feel like I failed you. <laughs> yeah, I, I would love. Um, Alex actually uh, said the other day that he might like to come on the show, so that would be really nice. Oh, my God, that would be phenomenal. He's like my favorite. Uh, him and Ram V, man, oh, I just... Tell me about it. The like, amount of talent in those two bodies. You know what, though? I'm scrolling... While we're talking, I'm just scrolling the Vault Titles page, and I'm seeing quite a few here that I've missed. Really? So I'm going to have to, like... Yeah. Uh, Michael. Uh, there's another Michael Marici one here that I haven't read called Spree. Oh, I don't think I've read Spree um and songs for the dead i haven't read oh huh. yeah uh, devil's red bride i haven't read oh devil's red bride's supposed to be really good yeah vagrant oh. queen i've been meaning to read but i haven't got around to it i think i've got it in my comicsology but i just keep my brain keeps registering it as yeah you've already read that but no i haven't yeah oh so spree is mall they must have changed the name Oh, well, there you go. 
Well, no, I, I haven't read that either. The plot is is top top right. Oh yeah, yeah, that was great. Really enjoyed Fisher um, from Tim Daniel and crew. Mm. Um, that's a nice, like one and done. I still need to read Barbaric. Everyone's just oh, raving about look, that. Look, Barbaric is so good. Vault gave me um again an, an early issue one of volume two, and yeah. it's so good i can't wait to read the rest of that series and nice. fox and hair is just phenomenal okay um oh. I'm, I'm so excited for that if so you like epic fantasy right i do yes so have you read the dark one don't think i have so oh, is that the brandon just, sanderson one uh, yeah yeah i saw it just Ed before no i haven't read that yet so if you've read a lot of Sanderson, he does it in a very similar way where it's like, here's the first issue, and then here's a weird interstitial between, like, after the first issue, before the second issue, and you have no idea what's going on, but yeah. by the end, it'll make more sense. And it flips, it's basically um, epic fantasy through a PR lens, oh, and... Yeah. It's very, oh God, it's so hard to explain. It's It plays with epic fantasy in a way that I haven't seen done. And I love when that happens, like with any genre. Uh, yeah, I know exactly <laughs> what you mean. And that's it. Like this is quickly me getting distracted by the what book yeah. vaults put out page has very quickly devolved into a just a a vault love fest. But you know, I mean, that is it most of this easy. show, to be honest. Yep. Um. And I just love love everything every vault creator is putting out at the moment. To be honest. Yeah. They. I mean, they are the A24 of comics. Like, they just put out gold, and they put out comics that no one else would publish. And yeah, not and in a way that it's like, these are bad. It's just like, they, they reinvent every genre that they interact with. Yeah, they're, they're absolutely wild. Uh, and they're, they're all so, so good. I've, they've, I'm going to have to pick up a bunch more of these. Um, yeah. Ideally, maybe some vault creators will be at our cons this year. I know that Donny Cates and uh, Megan came to Australia for one of our cons a couple of years ago. So cool. But they went to the ones down south. Uh, they didn't make it to my city. Yeah. So I didn't get well, to um, meet them, but next time. Yeah. I hope you do. I passed them in the airport the morning after the con. and. I didn't even have the energy to fanboy out after like <laughs> staying up all night. Yeah, I was like, "Have a good flight, guys," <laughs> and just like passed them. But they were probably like good. I don't feel like interacting either, so yeah. I'm hoping that they were just like, "Oh, thank God." Yeah, no, I completely get that. But yeah, like like autumnal is incredible. I'm gonna stop looking at all the vault books and get back to the one that we're talking about. Right, and it yeah. just is incredible i it's it's less than 20 bucks unless you're in australia then it's a little bit more because the the trading uh exchange rate yes but it, even for an australian it's less than 30 bucks i don't know how much the shipping is you have to find that out yourself but it's such a good book anyway chances are that your local comic shop has got it uh, I'm going to give a quick shout out to All Star Comics down in Melbourne because they treated me right when I went down to get um, Crowded Volume 3. Nice. Which was really, really nice. So they're a really nice crew there. Um, if you're a Melbourne local, even if you're not, check All Star Comics out and see if they've got it. Um, because, well, yeah, you could buy it directly from Vault. Being in Australia, that's probably going to be pretty exy with the shipping. So check if your local's got it first. If not, then go to Vault and get it because it's going to be worth reading it. It's really, really, really good. And you're not going to regret having this in your collection. And do it right before spooky season starts. Because yeah, exactly. Get it now, hold out, and then read it on Halloween. You need to read this before the fall leaves come so that you can be super freaked out by fall leaves. It's, yeah. it, it's, just, it's half the fun. 
come on. They the Yeti told you to. Right? I mean, for us it's um it's spring. It's coming into spring right now. Man. But forget about that. Yeah. But you yeah. Know, it's still it's still spooky season. So Right. That's fair. It's, it's just not I mean, it's not as much pumpkin spice season over here. Right. The, the the old pumpkin spice latte has grown in popularity the last couple of years, but we don't okay. get nearly as much cool Halloween-y stuff as you guys do. Dude, if we end up at the same <laughs> con, I'm just going to be bringing you comics and Halloween stuff. <laughs> oh, that's, that's amazing. I mean, if anyone ever can get their hands on some of that Starbucks pumpkin spice syrup and wants to send it to me, Ooh. they don't sell it in Australia. Starbucks here does the pumpkin spice lattes, but they don't sell their pumpkin spice syrup in stores. Now, if you really want to help me really enjoy the autumnal with a bottle of pumpkin spice that I can make my own spooky pumpkin spice coffees with and sit down and read the trade when I get it, yes. I mean, do it. Do it for Sean. <laughs> All right. Well, we are. Actually, we're just over the hour, which is delightful. By the time I edit this down, it'll probably be a little bit shorter. But where can people find you, Matt? Um, you can find me under the stairs in your home or at, at Comic Book Yeti on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram. Uh, email me at thecomicsyeti at gmail.com. We're gonna get I'm under the right stairs in my home and you're not here. Well, uh, you have other stairs way below. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, go to comicbookyeti.com. Very simple. Everything's spelled how you think it would be. Um, check Comic Book Yeti out on uh, YouTube. Type Comic Book Yeti into your favorite podcast platform and find us there. And buy Comic uh, Book Yeti t-shirts. Yes, please. Yeah. Pride Collection. From Byron O'Neill. I got... really want that one. If it wasn't for the Australia tax, I would have ordered it by now. Well, maybe we can uh, trade some merch again. But, yeah. Um, check us out if you haven't. Come say hi. Um, I'm on Twitter all the time because, again, I have ADD. And uh, the phone gives me instant gratification, which releases the good chemicals. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's it's really convenient for me how online you are because, like, time zones and stuff, and I get to talk to you a lot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've got two kids under the age of 10, so I just don't sleep. So that really helps with how often I'm online. Yep, I get that completely. But yeah, the, the Matt Leggetti and the entire Comic Book Yeti team are all delightful and incredible. Uh, big shout to Jimmy Gasparro and Yay! Byron and Grant. I, I love you all. Uh, all your writers and editors are doing great work too. So seriously, go give some big love to the Comic Book Yeti team. Uh, follow them all on the Twitters and listen to the podcasts and tell them I sent you because then they'll like me more. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, Guys, thank you so much for joining us. This, yeah. Uh, thanks for listening uh, to... Sean, be eloquent in my ramblings. Uh, I mean, I feel like I, I ram rambled pretty badly today too. <laughs> but it fun. was fun. It's been it's been something I've been really looking forward to since I hit you up and you said yes. And it's been something I've been wanting to do for a while. So it was it was really great to talk about such a good book. And of course, obviously, if you want to find me and the show, you can look for No Capes on all social media at No Capes Show. And obviously, uh, I am Sean Sunday. I go by Brain Beast Sean on Twitter and Brain Beast Studios on the other social media for my comics work and my game design work and stuff. And if you really, really want to support the show for free, the best thing you can do is like, comment, and share on YouTube yes. and on the social medias whenever a new episode comes out. And of course, if you want to really help, consider signing up to Patreon. You're going to get early access to all the episodes. You'll also get early access to sneak peeks at scripts and pitches that I'm working on for comics. 
um, playtest versions of my game design work. Like I'm working on a Pathfinder 2E player screen at the moment. You'll get early access to that to help me playtest it. Uh, I've got another adventure in the works for D&D that you'll get early access to amongst, as well as my two board games in progress. Lots of cool stuff. It's, it's sort of sporadically developing bits and pieces at a time, but you'll get early access to all of that. And obviously once I hit, I'm saying obviously a lot today, it must be the coffee. Uh, once I hit like a hundred to $150 a month, I'll be able to start making more comics because I'll be able to pay the collaborators I have in mind for specific scripts that I'm working on. So if you guys can get me to that, not only will no capes grow, but also you'll get more comics to read because I'll be making more comics. So please consider signing up to Patreon, but don't forget, just like, subscribe, share, means the world to me. And if you're watching this, leave a comment. Tell us what you thought about the episode. Tell us what you thought about the books. Uh, comment on any of the other episodes that you really like the books for, because without your feedback, I don't know how the show's going. And I really want to make this show into the best thing it can possibly be. And if you're a creator that might want to come on the show, head to the link below, seansonday.com. There is a link in the contact form menu where you can sign up to be on the shortlist. That way for season four, because this is the season finale for season three, season four, I will already know who's interested and I can just start sending out emails to ask you if you want to schedule an episode. And marginalized creators are highly encouraged to apply because there are so many cool people in the LGBT community, so many BIPOC creators out there that are doing incredible things, and I want to have you on to talk about these books and to show more people your work. So please hit that link, jump on the short list, and then I'll be able to reach out every time I cast a season and bring people onto the show. But for now, this has been No Capes, the show where we talk about creator-owned comics with creators who own comics. I am Sean Sunday. This has been Matt Leggetti, the comic book Yeti, a rare sighting. <laughs> and we'll see you next season for season four. And here's another thing. If you sign up to Patreon, you get to help me choose what color the season four overlay will be. I change color every season and you can help me choose. But season four will be premiering hopefully a bit earlier in the year, now that I've gotten the hang of editing all of the seasons, but it'll be premiering somewhere between March and June next year. So for now, please watch all the episodes, share everything you can. Thanks for being here. And of course, watch out for a special Christmas event. Haven't decided exactly what it's going to be yet, but I'm in the process of working on it. So stay safe, keep reading comics. Thanks for being here. Bye. Thank you for listening.